Yes. All right, good deal, good deal. So I just logged back in with my account, so things should be ready to go. All right, guys, okay, well, again, uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, today we're going to talk about one-way slab, all right, one-way slab. And sorry, I missed the office hour yesterday. I was on a fever, uh, and it turns out just common cold, so uh, lucky I didn't have the virus yet. And I keep uh, intend to keep that way, so be careful out there, guys, okay? So first of all, uh, <clears throat> we're gonna have our added office, office hour tomorrow, Thursday afternoon, and we'll have class Thursday, okay? So tomorrow, 2 to 3.30ish, we'll have uh, two lectures talk about the uh, design and analysis of one-way slab, a little bit of review as well tomorrow, okay? Follow up with an office hour afterwards, okay? <clears throat> so let's wait a little bit for the other students to join. We'll still have one more minute. And uh, <clears throat> I tell the truth, I was scared to death last night with my uh, temperature bump up to 101. And fortunately, it was nothing serious. So <laughs> uh, just be safe out there, okay? <clears throat> All right, well, it's time. So let's get started, okay? So let me share my screen first. Let me do this share screen, iPad. No, no, let me do this screen. There. <clears throat> okay, screen mirror. There you go. Good. Okay. Participate. The chat as well. All right. <clears throat> okay, so I suppose everybody can see my screen, right? Okay. Uh, again, if you have any question, feel free to interrupt me or uh, just uh, text message through the chat so I can stop answering questions, okay? Uh, again, I, I understand the online format, so I try to go slow. Uh, if you need to leave early, you can, and I'll uh, record the uh, lectures, upload to video, okay? So don't worry about it. Okay, all right, so first of all, let's take a look at the learning objectives. Okay, so learning objectives. <clears throat> learning objectives. Okay, what we're going to do today is to describe, describe considerations for designing a one-way slab. Okay, for designing a one-way slab. The key words here is one way, one way, okay? You gotta understand what does one way mean, okay? One-way slab. <clears throat> Second, we need to be able to determine the area, <clears throat> the area of reinforcement provided. Ah, sorry. In the unit strip, then that's the keyword here, unit strip. Okay, what does unit strip mean? All right, so I'm just gonna highlight this, underline these keywords here, okay, unit strip. Okay, given the bar, <clears throat> strength and size. Size and strength. Well, actually, spacing. Strength is included in grading, okay? So size and spacing both, okay? And then last but not least, design. Design a one-way slab. <clears throat> With reference to ACI 318. Okay, ACI 318, okay? All right, <clears throat> so that's the learning objectives. I'm gonna label slides one, number two. What is one-way slab, right? So first of all, one-way slab. This is a new term, one-way slab, okay? So a large one-way slab is a large flat plate supported 
by beams. Walls, okay, structure. and steel beams, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, these are when we slab. Actually, I can draw them, I can draw them, right? So if I wanna draw it, and by the way, is my screen clear or the resolution is pretty poor, guys? Can you see the screen well or the resolution? It's poor. Poor, right? Okay, let me- A little me, blurry. Yeah. yeah, let me try to reshare it, okay? So just give me a second here. <clears throat> Still pretty bad, eh? Okay, so let me do this. Let me get this direction. Slide it better. Okay. Is it better? Slide it better? Yes, oh. it's better. You go, dear. Okay. Just give me a second. Open these up again. <coughs> okay. All right. That was just my. Uh, morning breakfast coffee okay so don't worry <laughs> okay let's get back to it okay so now let me try to draw a slab for you right so let me say let me move from here <clears throat> this is the edge of it okay and this is a deflection curve looks like another edge goes like this and this is another end of it and then it's gonna bend like this as well okay and I have a support somewhere here. And this support is all the way back here, okay? All the way back here somewhere. Okay, continuously support. Okay, and I have another support right here. Okay, this is solid line, this is solid line. Okay, and then that is a one-way slab, all right? Why, why do we call it one-way slab? Because it only bends in one way. <clears throat> it only bends along this direction here. I call this L1, okay? It only bends along this direction. So the curvature only follow this direction, okay? The curvature only follow this direction, all right? And the height of it, the height of it, HF, is right here. This is the slab height, okay? And then, again, circle back on this, Two terms, right? So first term, one-way slab. One-way slab. Okay, because it bends only along one direction. <clears throat> okay. That's why it's called one-way slab, all right? And we'll tell you why and how we define it later, okay? But right now, one-way slab for us, it's just slab bending in one direction. The other thing, okay? The other thing is important is a unit strip. Unit strip. <clears throat> okay, why is that? Okay, because it bends in one way. And when we design for cross section, we're gonna use this cross section right here. Oops. We're gonna use this cross section right here. Okay. And it's a long cross section, so we cannot do the whole cross section. We have to do it by unit by unit and the least smallest unit that we're gonna design by is 12 feet, 12 inch or one foot. Okay, that is to say when we design a slab, we only design a strip like this. Okay, we only design a strip like this. <clears throat> okay, and the rest of the slab will be defined. The rest of the slab will be defined. Okay, and to see this, to see this, right? Let me show you a plan view, plan view. So this is more like isotropic view, isotropic view. Okay, so I also show you a plan view, okay? Plan view, so plan view looks like this. I have 
a frame per se. I have a frame per se. Okay, and these are my beams. <coughs> these are my beams, and I have a long beam here. Okay, and I have another frame on the side. Okay, frame on the side. Okay, this is outside. Have another beam here in the middle. Okay, have another beam here. <coughs> Short beam here. Another beam here. Okay, of course, this is continuous. This is go on. Okay, and let me call this bay one. Okay, and also I have corners, I have these columns. Okay, the, by the way, this is plan view, okay, plan view. I have the columns, the corners. Here, again, I have a columns here, column here, column here, column here. Okay, and I call this bay two. Bay one, bay two, bay three. Okay, and I call this grid A, this is horizontal line here, A, and horizontal line here, B. Okay, so this is a typical structure. This is a typical structure. And these beams, <clears throat> okay, these are beams. All these are beams. Okay, now if I define a span direction, let me use a red. If I define a span direction, I say <clears throat> this span in this direction, in the vertical direction, I call L2, L2, okay. Now, in this case, in this case, I will find the shortest direction, shortest direction, and also the slab in perpendicular, slab in perpendicular, to the beams, <clears throat> to the beams. That means if I choose to design a one-way slab, this is one-way slab, okay? The slab is actually going this way. Okay, this is the strip. And this strip have a foot. Perhaps I'm just gonna put it here, it's better. A foot, a distance, one foot. Okay, that's the strip. That's the strip we're talking about, all right? And now the span length, the span length, right? For this strip, okay, is gonna be from center of this support, basically here, and center another support, which is here, and this is L2, uh, sorry, this is L1. Okay, L1. Correspondingly, go back to this picture, this is L1. Okay, and L2 is that direction. Okay, that direction. Okay, so what qualifies as a one-way slab? Actually, there's a definition for it. Okay, so one, so let me call this span direction. Ah. This is not good. Okay, so this is the span direction. Okay, so one way slab happens when L1, so L2, actually L2 divided by L1 is greater or equal than two, 2.0. Okay, so when that happens, we call it one way slab. That means the shortest, <coughs> shorter span is the span length. In this case, L1 here. Okay, so that is a definition for one-way slab. 
before we slap. Okay, and don't forget, we're trying to do a strip that is one foot or 12 inch. Okay, so that is the, that is the definition for one way slap, for one way slap. Okay, so if I look at in a cross sectional view, okay, I'm gonna have a, essentially a simply supported slab. And if I cut the cross section out of it, what I will see is actually a strip. The strip will have a width of one foot. Okay, the height of HF. Okay, which is H here. So I call it HF, okay? See this HF? Okay, so that is the height of that section. So basically we're designing a reinforcement for this. All right, and these are the reinforcement at the bottom here. Okay, so this is the unit strip. So this is what we're designing for. Okay, this is what we're designing for. All right, okay, so now reinforcement AS. <clears throat> AS. T it turns out, it turns out we need to have different AS, different AS. Okay, what is different AS? Okay, so conceptually, conceptually, okay, this is slide number two, okay, three. The reinforcement have several functions, okay? We need to provide reinforcement for deflection. Okay, we need to provide reinforcement for deflection. Okay, so there is reinforcement. <clears throat> required by bending, by flexure design, by flexure strengths. Okay. Okay, but also we need to actually have reinforcement for shrinkage. by temperature and shrinkage, because it's a slab. It is a slab, okay? So these are the two, these are the two types of reinforcement needed for the slab, needed for the slab, okay? So let's take a look at them, right? Basically, <clears throat> we need to determine the reinforcement by, by the flexure strength. So A, if I call this one, call it two, so one, Okay, flexure reinforcement. Okay, so how do we design flexure reinforcement? We calculate the apply moment, right? And get phi mn, right? And then get AS, okay? But don't forget, okay? Don't forget, this AS is per strip. That means it's in a foot, in a foot, or one or 12 inch, in a 12 inch. So once we calculate AS, right, we need to convert it back to AS per foot, <coughs> per foot, okay? That equal to the area of one bar. Area of bar, okay? Multiplied by 12 inch per spacing in terms of inches. <clears throat> okay, 12 inch per space. And you can find this, you can find this ACI 6.5.1, 6.5.1, okay? Now, if we do this, all right, and we'll find actually the minimum spacing because normally normally bar is given normally bar size is given or is predetermined okay normally bar size is predetermined so we find the spacing between bars by using this equation so s 
space in terms inches, in terms inches, has to be smaller or closer than AB, whatever 12, divided by the required AS per foot. Required AS per foot. Okay, so this is a design trick. So what we find out is we use one unit strip and calculate the required reinforcement area. Okay, required reinforcement area. And we utilize this relationship given the bar size is known, reversely calculate the required spacing. Reversely calculate required spacing. Okay, so that is the first to determine the flexure reinforcement to resist the bending, to resist the bending. Okay. And also ACI says, okay, I had to have certain limitations for it, certain limitations for it. So ACI says, okay, you can calculate the required spacing by that, but this shall not exceed the maximum spacing, shall not exceed the maximum spacing, which is smaller of three times of slab height, slab highness, or 18 inches, okay? And you can find this from ACI 7.7.2.3. And ACI call this deflection control. Deflection control spacing. Deflection control spacing requirement. Okay. Or ACI also have another crack control, crack controlled spacing requirement. Okay, and there, in there, right, the maximum spacing <coughs> will be smaller of these two equations, 15 multiplied by 40 thousand divided by FS minus 2.5 CC, concrete cover, concrete clear cover, okay? Concrete clear cover, okay? And another equation is 12, 4,000, 40,000 divided by FS, okay? And knowing that FS equal to two thirds of FY yield strength. Okay, and this is an ACI table 24.3.2. Okay, all right. So for the flexure reinforcement, quickly recall, for the flexure reinforcement, okay, we first will calculate the required reinforcement based on bending based on bending. And once we have that, we can calculate the spacing given the bar size. And once this spacing is determined, we find out whether the spacing exceeds the maximum spacing by deflection control or maximum spacing by the crack control. Okay? Okay, so essentially what we're saying is that the spacing for flexure, so let's call it S1, Flexure. Is that table 2.4.3.2? 24.3.2. Okay, thank you. So the flexure spacing basically equal to the smallest long list equations, okay? AB 12 divided by required AS per foot. <coughs> Okay, now 3HF, 18 inches, 15, 40,000 FS minus 2.5 CC, 12, 40,000 divided by FS. Okay, so these are the flexure reinforcement requirement, flexure reinforcement requirement. Okay, and ACI also says, not only that, not only that, I need to have additional reinforcement, additional reinforcement. So second, additional reinforcement. This is extra, okay? This is extra 
for temperature and shrinkage. So for shrinkage and temperature. <coughs> this is to say, not only you have to have a flexure reinforcement, you need to have a shrinkage and temperature as well. Okay, so this is additional reinforcement, this additional reinforcement, okay? And for that, for that, okay? And this additional reinforcement, let me label cleanly for you, okay? Remember? <clears throat> Remember, I draw this before. Draw this before, okay? Draw this before, okay? Ah, sorry. Let me draw as much as I can, okay? Now, don't forget, when we talk about one-way slab, we're talking about L1. This is the bending direction. And we also have L2. Okay. This shrinkage reinforcement, okay, is along L2 direction. Okay. That means it goes, it goes this way. <clears throat> okay, now here, this is along a one direction, the flexure reinforcing along a one direction, okay? So to show it here, this is going this way. See it? See it? Do you see it? So the blue is flexure or one, okay? And the red, <coughs> which is in that direction, is shrinkage and temperature. Okay? Okay, so they are in different direction. They're in different direction. Okay, they're not in the same direction, okay? It's a slab. So along the L1 direction, which is flexure, we calculate it per resistance. And the other direction, which is for shrinkage temperature, we just use the code. We just use the code. All right. So now the equation for this is actually in terms of AS mean, the smallest amount of reinforcement. Okay. This is per foot. This is per foot. Okay. By the way, and that equal to a Right, that is because, let me see, clean this one, our largest. <clears throat> largest of these, 0 0.002 AG, okay, for FY, small equal to 40 and 50 KSI. And 0 0.008 AG for <clears throat> FY equal to 60 KSI and 0 0.018, okay, and multiply 60,000 FY AG, but has to be greater or equal than 0 0.0014. And this is for FY yield strengths bigger than 60 KSI. Okay, bigger than 60 SI. So these three equations, one, two, three. Okay, three equations. Now, what is AG? AG is the gross cross-section error, which is this fellow right here. Okay, so AG. <clears throat> should equal to L1, multiply HF. And I'm sorry, this is not per foot. Okay. Okay, AG is L1 on the HF. All right. Okay. So <clears throat> I want to show you a little bit. Okay. If I cut, okay, 
let me get this one copy here. Uh, no, no. Okay, let me just copy, paste. All right, so if, <clears throat> if I want to make a cut, all right, I want to make a cut, I say, let's cut here. Let me use a different color to show you better. Um, purple, okay. Say so if I want to cut here, okay, I want to see what it is, looks like for baby, for grade B. Okay, let me do a cut. Okay, cut. That B. Cut that B. Okay, what it will look like? It'll look like this, actually. This is the LB. This is L shape the beam. This is cut, okay? And this is going this way. <clears throat> okay, and I have a corresponding name, this fellow here. Okay, I have this fellow here. Okay, and I have this fellow here. Okay, now I will have, let me draw the reinforcement for you, okay? I will have the red reinforcement on top. This is actually for the corner negative reinforcement. Okay, and this will be the bottom reinforcement here. Okay, and I'll extend it out this way, and I'll extend it out this way here, extend it out this way here, extend it out this way here. Okay. Okay. And since this is L1 direction, you see? All right. Now these are the flexure reinforcement. <clears throat> these are the flexure reinforcement. Okay. All these. Okay, and don't forget I have negative reinforcement as well, okay? These are negative reinforcement. Okay, these are negative reinforcement. Okay, but now in between of them, I will have the shrinkage reinforcement go this way, this way, this way, and also top here, top here, top here, top here, top here, top here, bottom here, bottom here. And bottom here, bottom here, bottom here, top here, top here, bottom here, here, here. Okay, now these are shrinkage. Ah, my write up is horrible, I'm just getting sick. Shrinkage and temperature reinforcement. Okay. <clears throat> And see, those are along L2 direction. This is L1 direction. Got it? Okay. So that is the cut, okay? That is the cut. And you can see this clearly, okay? Clearly. All right. So we're going to give you an example of how we design it, how we're gonna design it, okay? How are we gonna design it? All right, so let me see. It's page four. Page four. And five, show an example, right? Show an example. <clears throat> example, okay. So the example is designed the one-way slab as shown. Okay, so to simplify your process, okay, I'm gonna tell you, okay, this one-way slab is gonna have a 10 inches, 10 foot span lens, 10 feet span lens. Okay, and I say this dead load is self-weight only. <coughs> Light load, 150 PSI, pound per square inches. PSF, sorry, pump. 
Yes, F pound per square foot. Okay. And the F prime C, concrete strength four KSI. FY, 40 KSI. Ah, need this pencil. Okay, 40 KSI. Okay, now first thing first, first thing first, okay, I want to be able to define, I want to be able to define the thickness of the slab, thickness of the slab, okay, so first thing I want to define the thickness of slab. Now we haven't talked about this yet. Basically HF, HF, okay, now based on ACI, Nine point three point one, okay, is actually telling us. It's actually telling us, right? The thickness of slab H equal to span length L, and don't forget this is L one here. Divide by twenty, <coughs> multiply by zero point four, plus F Y, divided by ten thousand. Oh, sorry, 100,000 divided by 100,000. Okay, so in this case, in this case, I have a span length of 10 foot, 10 feet, converted in inches divided by 20, everything is in terms of inches. Here inside the bracket, 0.4 plus yield strength of the bar, 40,000. Divided by 100,000. Of course, the thousand cancel. Okay, so I have 0 0.8, 10, come two, so this becomes six, right? So six multiplied by 0 0.8, I have 4.8 inches. Okay, 4.8 inches. To make it clear, you write this way. <clears throat> so the required height by ACI equation is 4.8 inches. Okay, so I'm gonna say, I'm gonna use five inch. Okay, so to be consistent, let me use HF. Okay, five inches. All right, five inches. Okay, now <coughs> for this, this is the height. So essentially in my head, I'm gonna have a strip, unit strip. This is 12 inch of unit strip. It's gonna be five inch of height. All right, what if I wanna find D already, the depths? What if I wanna find D already, the depths? I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna assume the bar somewhere here. Okay, I'm gonna assume the bar is somewhere here. Okay, and I'm going to assume the bar is number four. Okay, and this is a very commonly used number four slabs. Okay, assume the bar number four. All right, so I want to find out D, which is distance from top fiber to the center of the bar here. Okay, so I'm going to say the cover, clear cover here, I'm going to say is 0.75 inches. Assume. 0.57 inches. So D approximately equal to H, which is HF minus concrete cover, okay, and minus bar size divided by two. All right. So D roughly equal to five inch minus 0 0.75 inch assumed minus a number four half inch divided by two. All right. Half inch divided by two. So I got a roughly estimated height of what? Five minus 0 0.75 minus 0.25 four inches. Okay, so first of all, I estimate, I estimate the height of it. It's four inches, okay? The depth of it, sorry, the depth of it. Okay, four inches. So at this point, at this point, let me make a summary. So basic, we're saying is HF equal to five inch, Okay, depth equal to four inch. 
me use gonna I'm gonna use number four box. Okay. This is the conclusion from the first initial analysis. Okay, not too bad. Not too bad. All right. So moving from that, moving from that, let's take a look at the load. Let's take a look. So the dead load is the slab weight. Ah. Sorry, slab weight. Could you scroll up for just a minute, please? Now you're gonna. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Okay. All right. So this is a slab weight. Let me. Zoom in a little bit, okay? So this will be easier for you and easier for me, okay? All right, okay. So the slab weight, right? I'm trying to find out the weight of it, okay? How am I gonna do that? Okay, be careful now, be careful now, because there are some units, there are some units, all right? What is the unit here? I'm trying to find out the slab weight and this slab weight has to be per linear foot, okay? This slab weight have to be linear per linear foot, all right? So now I essentially have this per foot. Concept in my head, concept in my head, okay? So the height is HF, <coughs> okay? And this is in terms of inches, I need to convert into foot, so to divided by 12 inch per foot. Okay, and I have a weight, sub weight is 150 pounds per cubic feet. Pound per cubic feet. Okay, and this gives me a roughly what? 62.5 pound per square foot. Pound per square foot. <clears throat> okay. And this is actually per square foot. Okay. Pound per square foot. Okay. This is not linear foot anymore. Not linear foot anymore because I'm talking about a strip. I'm talking about a strip. All right. All right. So I'll show you why. Okay. In a minute. I will show you why in a minute, okay? So just keep in mind, this unit for the slab is gonna be pound per square foot, not a linear foot as a beam design, okay? Not the linear foot in beam design, okay? This is very important, okay? You have to use the pound per square foot unit for slab design, okay? This is for slab only. I cannot stress this enough, all right? I see mistakes all the time. I see mistakes all the time, okay? Be careful. All right, so just keep in, bear that in mind and let's calculate, right? So the omega u <coughs> apply factored, factored distributed load. Omega u equal to 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 live load. All right, uh, color is not right. You don't have to erase it. I just need to because compulsive behavior. So omega u equal to 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 live load. All right, that gives me a 1.2 multiply 62.5 plus 1.6 multiply by 150. Okay, this 150 is a live load, okay, by the way. Don't blame me, let's go back, see? Live load, okay? Okay, live load. Okay, and then I got a number of 315 pound per square feet. Okay, you see? Pound per square feet. Now, <coughs> I need to calculate the moment, okay? And careful here, looking at this beam here, this is the distributed load. And this omega u we just calculated is 315 pound per square feet. All right. And this is not per linear foot, not per linear foot. Why? I'm going to show you why in a second. Okay. I'm going to show you why in a second. So bear with me. This is the calculate 
factor distributed load, okay? And this is span length. So naturally, if I want to find a moment, if I want to find a moment, so I'm just going to redraw this drawing to remind us, all right? To remind us. You don't have to, but it's just for me easier to see it. So this is omega u equal to 315 pound per square feet, and this is 10 feet of span length, okay? So mu equal to omega u L1, which is 10 feet squared, divided by eight. All right, and that is 315 pounds per square foot. Okay, so 0 0.314 kips, kilopounds per square foot. Okay, kilopounds per square foot, okay? A thousand, all right? We'll just convert that by a thousand. So let me just write down here equals 0 0.1315 kilo pounds per square foot. And this is 10 feet squared <clears throat> divided by eight. Okay, and this gives me a nine three point nine four kips foot. This is the moment per foot. Per foot. Okay, this is very important. This is very important. Why? Because this is the unit strip. Okay, so moment per unit strip. Okay. All right. So this is a this is the moment per unit strip. That's what we're talking about, right? Per unit strip. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead, say, okay, to get this moment resistance, I need to have phi mu smaller than phi mn <clears throat> and assume phi equal to 0.9, which means tension control, right? Don't forget, this is long, long time ago in the galaxy far, far away, right? So don't forget, okay? This is assume tension control. Assume tension control, okay? When we have that, so the required area of AS, okay, equal to MU divided by phi, FY, you should see this, remember this from our first flash design, okay? D minus half A. Okay, all of you should remember clearly, we had an assumption saying here, D minus half A roughly equal to 0 0.9, 0 0.9 D of the depths, right? But for slabs, it's a bit different for slab, okay? We approximate that equal to 0 0.95 D. 0 0.95, okay? That's different, 95%, okay, 95%. <clears throat> okay, so now this equal to 3.5. A three point, sorry, 3.94 kips foot per linear foot, okay? And let me convert it back in inch, right? 12 inch per foot, okay? Divided by a 0.9, which is a fee, okay? And 40 KSI of U strength, okay? And this is 0 0.95 and multiply by D, what is D? Four inches. Four inches. All right, all right. And this equal to what? This equal to a 0 0.346 inch squared per foot. Don't forget there's a per foot here. It's per foot here. Okay, and let's just be sure, let me put this unit here. This is KSI, and this is inch. Okay, so you will have a per foot here. Okay, let me see why, right? Let me just show you why, right? So this is foot by foot, but foot by foot canceled. This is inches, right, at the bottom here, right? And there's another inch here, so this is what? Let me just 
try to manipulate the unit here, okay? So let me just say unit calculation, unit calc. Okay, so <clears throat> right. So let me just make a unit calculation here. Okay, so this is kips foot divided by foot multiplied by inch divided by foot. Bottom here, KSI. So it's kips per inch squared multiplied by inches. Okay. And that equal to a foot by foot canceled, inch become inch, kips, kips cancel. So on the top, I have inch per foot and bottom I have inch. So this become inch squared per foot. Okay, you see the unit matches, unit matches. And you need this per foot. And this per foot actually coming from this here. And coming from when you calculate the dead load, this is pound per square foot. Okay. Be careful, right? These are very important. You will have a per foot coming out of this whole calculation. If you don't, you're in trouble. All right. So watch out the unit. This is different from the beam design. Okay. All right. So that is the required reinforcement. But now we're not going to stop there, right? Because we need to do iterations, right? Remember, we have to do iterations. Okay. So we're gonna go back and bring this number in, trying to find the compressive zone A, right? So confirm A. So A equal to ASFY divided by 0 0.85 F prime C <coughs> being Whitney stress block, right? We use the same Whitney stress block and this A equal to 0 0.346, okay, inch squared per foot, okay, must by 40 KSI. Okay, divided by this whole thing, 0 0.85 multiplied by 4 KSI and multiplied by 12 inch per foot. Okay. Oh, sorry. Let me just take this out. No more 12 inch per foot. Okay. Just multiplied by 12 inches. Okay. Now, be careful here. Where did that 12 inch come from? Okay. Where did that 12 inch come from? Okay, because this is basically 12 inches, unit strip, remember? Unit strip. Remember? All right, then you do the calculation, you find out this is 0 0.339 inch per foot. You still have this per foot left over. Okay. Still have this per foot set of leftover. Okay. All right. So once you get A, you can pursue it and recalculate AS, recalculate AS. Okay. So I'm just going to stop right here and right here, recalculate AS. Okay. We'll talk about this tomorrow lecture. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. This is it for today. Uh, any questions at this point? You can shout out or text message. Okay. All right. So um, sorry, I'm a little bit uh, uh, mellow today. Uh, my energy hasn't gone up to a hundred percent. Oh yeah, you can show me the unit for MU. Here's where MU. Where is the MU? Right here. Okay. Can you see it? Okay. All right. So uh, we'll talk more tomorrow in the. <clears throat> In the, in the uh, lectures, and also we have some extra times for the we have extra time for the questions for the office hour. Okay. Now regarding how this unit ends up like this, you can follow through this equation. Okay, follow this equation. All right. You can try to derive it yourself through follow through this equation. If not working, uh, we can talk about tomorrow. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much, you guys, and uh, be safe. Okay. Uh, my personal experience, it is a scary time. And I'm telling you, uh, my first hand, I haven't, you know, been exposed to the virus yet, but just by the fever last night gave me a little bit of goosebumps. So just be careful out there, okay? Stay home, stay safe. All right? Okay, so I'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a good day now. Bye now.